In this video, I want to show you how we can parse JSON data inside a Java application. Our motivating context is looking at changes to Wikipedia pages. Here's the Wikipedia page for soup. It's a pretty interesting page. Maybe not real controversial, but still we might wonder, when was the last time this page changed? As you may or may not know, Wikipedia has a robust API for asking these kinds of questions. Here is a sample query. By visiting this URL, we get a response, which is JSON data, telling us when the soup page last changed. Notice the name of the soup page is provided here as a parameter. And if we look carefully at this JSON structure, we might see that the timestamp is here. Of course, it's all coming through as one line, but to make it a little easier to read, I've pretty printed it over here. So if we know how to open a connection to a URL and read that data, then we can access this kind of information from Wikipedia. Our next task then would be to pull out the timestamp. You might be tempted to use a naive approach, like searching for the word timestamp in the string. That's not very robust. Imagine what would happen, for example, if you searched for the Wikipedia page timestamp. In general, we want to use the right tools for the job, and the right tool here would be something that helps us parse the JSON. In a previous video, I talked about how I used to use JSON for this purpose. However, that approach is tricky because this value here which is the article identifier, is not known ahead of time. I found that a much easier way to go is to use a tool called JSON Path. You can read all about this tool here. This tool provides a domain-specific language for parsing JSON. My point here isn't to give a complete tutorial about that domain-specific language, but once you know that it exists, it can be really useful. You can find some online evaluators to help you debug your JSON Path queries. So for example here, I've pasted in that same result from Wikipedia. I've experimented to get this JSON path query, and I'm getting exactly the result I want, which in this case is a list that contains the string, which is the timestamp. Now, if I want to incorporate that into my Gradle project, I need to load the dependency. A simple Google search for JSON path Gradle takes me here. I can find the latest version of the library, click on Gradle, and see exactly what dependency I need to add. Let's go over to IntelliJ IDEA and see what we can do with this. Here's a real simple console application I put together so that we could test this. The main method will read a line of input and then hand that off to the Wikipedia revision reader and ask for the latest revision and then print it out. This get latest revision of method takes the article title, turns it into an appropriate query encodes it using URL encoder so that we can deal with things like spaces and international characters, and converts that into a URL to which we can connect. This next piece is helping to make sure that we comply with the terms of service of Wikipedia. They do request that all of these programmatic accesses include a user agent, and so I've done so. And I should say, thank you Wikipedia for making this API so easy to access. Once we have that URL connection, we can get the input stream, which will point to that data I showed before, the JSON text. And this leads us to the interesting problem we're trying to solve, which is, how can we incorporate JSON path into this application? Now, of course, I want to approach this using test-driven development. So let me start by writing a test. This thing that I'm making is going to be responsible for taking the stream of data from Wikipedia and pulling out the timestamp. So I'm going to call it the Wikipedia revision parser. Of course, to start my unit test, I need the thing that I'm testing. And I need to give this a thing to parse. One option would be to just type in the string itself like this. And then paste it from my browser. But we can see that's pretty ugly, in part because in Java we have to escape all those quotation marks. Let's find a better way. I'm going to put that data into my resources folder instead. I'll just call it test.json. So 
So this file contains just that response that I expect to get from Wikipedia. Now I'll open up a stream to that file, similar to how I would do so to Wikipedia. The main difference, of course, being that I know I have access to this file, so I don't have to worry about a dependency on the network. And I'm going to use what some people call the class loader trick to make sure I can load this. Alt-Enter will bring in that class. Now let's send that data to the parser. And what I expect to get out of that is the timestamp. Finally, we can put in our assertion. What I expect to get is this timestamp. And what I actually got is timestamp. Alt-Enter to bring in that class. And now let's stub in enough of the code to make it compile. We want to make sure we put this in our production code. And for now, let's just make this fail. Let's run the tests. Whoops. We can put this in place as well. Let's try that again. Great! Everything compiles and our test fails. That's the red of red-green refactor. To actually do the parsing, we want to bring in JSON path, so let's hop back to the browser and get that dependency that we found. Here it is. So I can take this and put it into my build.gradle file under dependencies. Remember, whenever you change your build.gradle file, if you don't have auto-update enabled, you need to click on the button up here to reload your configuration. Okay, we should now have access to JSON path. Let's go back to our implementation. We can access JSON path through the JSON path class. It has several read methods, and we're going to use the one that takes an input stream. And the query we need is the one that I experimented with until I found something that worked. Now we want to return the result here, but we have a little bit of a problem. This read method is generic. It can return any kind of type. That makes sense because of how JSON path works. The kind of thing it returns depends on the query, but it causes some trouble when we're trying to figure out how do we return the right object. One thing we could do is look at this experiment that I ran to try to figure out what kind of thing it's giving us back. It looks like maybe an array or a list. But don't forget that when you're in the IDE, you have a full featured debugger underneath you, so you can inspect runtime state. Let's see how to do that, but first we have to make sure this compiles. This can throw an exception, so let's just add that to the method signature. And that's going to cause a cascading problem in the calling site, so we'll have to do the same thing there. Let's grab this result and just put it into some object O and have some return statement there so that this still compiles. I'll add a breakpoint to line 10 and now run this test through the debugger. So execution now has stopped at line 10. Let's go ahead and step over line 10. You can see that our local variable O is a JSON array of size 1. And in fact, it contains the string that we want. So it seems that all we need to do then is use this JSON array class to get the first thing out of its results. One option would be to do it in the safe way. Oh. 
I was hoping that might work, but JSON array itself is generic, so we need to make sure we have the string version of this as well. Let's try that. I'll remove the breakpoint for now, and then run the tests. And that'll do it. Now, of course, this is only the green step of red-green refactor. Let's take a quick look at what we might want to change in order to improve the design of this application. For one thing, the type being returned here is a string, but the thing I'm talking about is a timestamp. Now that's an interesting problem. String, of course, can contain basically anything. Maybe instead I want to redesign my solution so that we take the string from JSON and parse it into something like a real programmatic timestamp, using something like Java's date and time API. We can quickly review our other files as well. The test is pretty short and seems okay, again, except for this problem of representation of timestamps. And one thing I don't really like about our main application is that we have all of this logic that constructs query URLs inside of this one application. That makes it awfully hard to test. I would like to pull that out into a separately testable module. Finally, I want to point out something interesting here, which is that the code that does the network connection will not be covered by unit tests. And that's because we know from the pragmatic programmers that unit tests should be first. Part of this definition, the I, is independence. We can't write a unit test that touches the network because that introduces a dependency on the network, which is something our program doesn't control. Fundamentally, that's why I pulled out my test case into a local file to test the parser, rather than have a live connection to Wikipedia. It keeps the test fast, and it keeps them isolated or independent. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I gave you a couple of pointers on things you might try to fix up here. And of course, once you start exploring Wikipedia's API, maybe you'll find all sorts of other interesting problems that you can solve using this combination of tools. Happy programming.